Hello, good morning. My name is Ben Goldsmith, and I'm going to review a play for you in this thing that I've entitled Ben Goldsmith Reviews a Play. Uh, so without further ado, let's crack on. I've got my notes, so if I keep looking down, it's just so I can supply you with information even more fertile than the stuff that I can pull from my mind. Um, the play I'm going to review for you is The Beauty Queen of Lanan, which is currently running at the Old Vic Theatre. Um, it's directed by Joe Hill Gibbons, who's a very interesting uh, young man, young director. He's directed at places that just charge you with a feeling that, yeah, he's got to be good. He started out um, directing around places like the Batsy Art Centre, which is fantastically inventive theatre 503 which takes chance after chance on new writing and now he's been batted around between the young Vic and the royal court so the man's charged with ideas he's, and he's done a very good job of this play it's a fantastic production let me just say this is a good review this will be a good review um the cast is Rosaline, Rosaline Linehan, Derbel Crotty, Frank Laverty and Johnny Ward. I can mention them all with equal time because there's only four people in the cast, which is always fantastic. The production has run from the 20th of July, so if you've seen it already, please tell me what you think. Um, either tweet me at bengoldsmith90, at bengoldsmith90, or just comment under this video. Either's fine. I'll get back to you either way, or perhaps I won't. Um, but it runs until the 3rd of September, um, so you've still got plenty of time to go and see it if you haven't seen it already. And I recommend you do phone them up if you're under 25 and get the under 25 £10 ticket offer, because then it will cost you £10 instead of more than £10. Um, <clears throat> so the play. Let's actually talk about the play, shall we? It really has taken the theatre press uh, by storm, and I think justifiably so, since it first ran at the, uh, at the Young Vic over a year ago. I, think, I, I can't remember if it was started in 2009 or 10. I haven't done adequate enough research, but it uh, it's had a run there and then it toured, including Ireland, it toured all around and now it's come back. Um, it has relatively completely different cast. The only cast member that's hang on to her place is Rosaline Linehan. All oh, the rest have gone on to do other projects, but this is still a very, very strong cast. Four actors that really know what they're doing. Um, so here, I'm just going to do a small and not terribly spoilerish review of the plot, just for, uh, for those of you who aren't going to go and see it and just want to know what's going on in the theatre world, but there will be some spoilers in it, so <clears throat> spoiler alert. Um, yes, spoiler alert. There are four characters in the play, as I've seen. The two women, the Folans, Maureen, who is very old, Mag, who is played as the archetypal frump, live together in a cottage in, um, in Linan, obviously, which is in the arse end of nowhere. It's in Galway, which if you know, Ireland is not all the arse end of nowhere, but a lot of it can be considered to be such. Um, Mag, the ancient mother of Maureen, spends all of her time, pretty much all of her time, in her dressing gown and gym jams, rocking in her chair. Um, this is me rocking in a chair, if you didn't quite understand what a rocking chair was. Um, Maureen, as I said, comes on, is introduced to you, the audience, as the archetypal front, but as the play unravels, so do her clothes. Um, she is a ball of repressed sexual energy, you find out, at the beginning of the play. She doesn't portray this too much, except when she does, and then she portrays it in massive ejaculatory bursts of, of sexy talk that come out of nowhere. And when her mum joins in with that, it's, it's something to behold. But I'll, I'll not give away individual lines, because they are a treat, just a treat. Um, Maureen waits on her mother. Her mother demands her to make her comp plan again because it's too lumpy, her, her tea is too cold, things like this. Um, so Maureen lives in service to her mother, but she isn't subordinate, she's argumentative. And many times she references that she is just waiting for her mother to die. And they do this in the most hilarious way, it's such a sombre subject to approach, but that is the beauty of Martin Madonna. And that brings me on to, no it doesn't, I'm going to say it later. Shush now, all of you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's this obvious but very interesting dynamic between Mag, mother, and Maureen, daughter. Um, they're working against each other. They both hate each other. They both kind of depend on each other as well. Um, in the end of the play, Maureen kills her mother. There's the spoiler. Um, Maureen kills her mother so she can run off to America with Pato Dooley. Now, Pato Dooley is one of the Dooleys, of which there are two. Um, <clears throat> Pato is far older than his brother Ray. He's moved to England. He's been a builder. Um, just bringing money back home. Pato is played by Frank Laverty. I'll get on to Frank Laverty later on. It's fantastic. And it's Pato who is the exponent of Maureen's sexual awakening, shall we call it. Um, without him, if you put this play, spin the play into a counter-reality, um, would Maureen kill Mag? Would Maureen kill her mother? 
she would have been capable to kill her mother, I think, but there's no, there would have been no catalyst. Um, would she have actually, I was going to give away how she killed her mother then, that would have been stupid. Would she have done it? No, I don't think she would. So Pato is a very, very important character um, in objective terms, if you're viewing the play as a system of movements, which we're not. Um, in the play, Pato has just come back from England. He's going to move to America. Um, whilst in England, before he goes across the pond in a big way, he writes to Maureen, offering her to come with him to the US of America. Um, Mag, mother, intercepts the letter, and madness ensues. There's one more character, as you would have noticed, he's Ray Dooley, the younger brother, and he's a fantastic character. He's very functional. He delivers the messages, or he tries to deliver the messages and doesn't quite manage it, between um, the Dooleys and the Folans. All the, all the play, I should have mentioned this earlier, all of the action in the play happens in the cottage in Linan as well, so it, it gives you a little arena, a little petri dish in which everything, all these experiments happen. Um, <clears throat> Ray's fantastic. He goes, go, he's a go-between who just pours petrol on fires. He is fantastic and he's very, very funny. So hopefully I've embursed you with the knowledge that this play has a great concept, a great script, four great characters who are exceptionally well drawn. Now it's up to the director and the actors to take the play from page to stage and really make them live. And there are a couple of things I need to say about it. I must premise this all with saying that the production is fantastic. It's a 7.5 and, and 8 out of 10, something like that, if you're going to give it a mark, which I should. 7.5 or 8, one of those. Um, <clears throat> nice of me to make up my mind. I apologise for my voice as well. I've slept very recently and sleep is good, isn't it? It's good. Um, doing this play is a balancing act of the hilarious and the disgusting. And I'm not going to tell you what's hilarious and what's disgusting in case you want to go and see it. Um, but... It's always the way in Madonna, he's a true genius of the um, black comedy genre. But sometimes the comedy moments, which are my favourite, um, because I'm me and they are, um, <clears throat> they sometimes seem like the director, this I'm sure isn't true, it seems like the director and cast have read them on the page and they haven't understood why they're supposed to be funny. And there's this moment which I'm going to try and explain to you, but it's going to be not funny because I'm explaining it to you, where... And it happens a couple of times in the play between different characters, um, where one character says A, as in I can't understand you, and the other character says A, back to them, as in I can't understand you. And then the third character, and the same character again, the first one, in the exchange, I'm explaining this so well, and so quickly, um, says A again. And you get this sort of tennis ball thing of A, 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 and it's very funny, not when one ginger guy does it in his, in his house, but it's very funny when you see this on stage unfolding, it's really funny. But it wasn't in this production. It seems, as I said, that they've read it in the script and they've only kept it in due to some fidelity to Madonna because, um, that's my notes, because <clears throat> they just didn't understand it. And it really slowed the momentum a little bit. But that, as I said, it slowed the momentum a little bit. The momentum was fantastic. It was a brilliant play. At one point, a girl who was sitting next to me, um, and I don't think she was sitting with anyone, she just came on her own, she just said out front in a completely inexplicable, probably to her, manner when um, Mag, mother, was re tearing up a letter that she'd read. She just said out front, I hate her. So the dynamic is there. I, I must stress that this is a very, very good production. And I'm just critiquing because that's what I do. Um, the disgusting was done really, really well. There's a, a moment at the end of the play that if you see it, um, you'll know what happens. If you've seen it, you'll know what it is. I don't want to say it, but it's how um, the reveal is done, um, how it's realised that Maureen's actually killed her mum. <clears throat> it's done very, very well. The lighting left Maureen alone on the stage, so you couldn't see that her mum was rocking dead in the chair <laughs> until the lights come up, and you see how she has been dispatched. Um, it's, it was a brilliant moment. That is fantastic directing, direction by Joe Hill Gibbons, and also he's really used that young Vic stage in allowing people that are spread around the stage in a really like whoosh, like that and the stage in the middle everyone can see the stage to allow them all to not see a character who's rocking in the middle of the stage just by lighting was a fantastic coup uh, coup de theater probably not and that's mixing french and german pronunciation because i'm an idiot um also 